the Big Bang. Your argument is lacking in all scientific merit. Show opens up on Sheldon berating one of the guys for how dumb they are compared to himself cliche. It is well established. Superman cleans his uniform. And it's all about the comic books cliche. Which is worse, obvious product placement or obvious product placement avoidance? Answer, it doesn't matter. Cindy drops the ding hammer down on both. I think we can safely assume that all Kryptonian condiments were destroyed when the planet Krypton exploded. Maybe, but I'll bet there's still a Kryptonian Twinkie or two out there. Those things are an absolute pain to get rid of. It's basically the herpes of the Kryptonian and snack aisle. Ken Dorian Drake, I give up. You can't have a rational argument with this man. <laughs> See, being pedantic is hilarious. Nitpicking movies is fun. Millions of Nielsen households can't be wrong. No, not all at once. <laughs> then how? Now Sheldon. Why did Sheldon stand up? He has the exact same view Howard does. Doesn't do anything for me. If I was gonna go that way, I'm more of a Zac Efron kind of guy. <laughs> oh yeah, like you have a shot with Zac Efron. <laughs> really thought that was going to get into cringier territory with this show's inability to dodge the homophobic joke stratosphere of the aughts. Raj nips it in the bud with reasonable grace, but you've got a better chance hitting it with Zac Efron than getting me to take a sin off here. Yeah, Dr. Gablehauser said if I wanted to set something up in the photo multiplier lab that you'd be able to give me a hand? You want to work with me? Actually, he just asked you to set something up for him. Leonard reads way too much into a simple request, but still somehow manages to get women like Joyce and Penny to sleep with him. Not sure what those two things have to do with each other, but seem like as good a time as any to say f***ing Leonard. Aside from this using talcum powder for wee bowling joke not being funny, it also feels wrong for the character. He's fastidious and technologically astute. In what world does he A, think this would help, and B, not freak out about the particles gumming up the wee moat? These do-overs when my people play sports. Sandy Koufax, Bill Goldberg, and Dara Torres all just randomly scream f you, Howard, with no knowledge as to why or what for, except the universe needed them to. It's just a video game, and we suck at it. <gasps> nice motivational speech from the team captain. Aren't Howard and Sheldon playing against each other, though? How is this a team dynamic if that's the case? We're in a rock band. No. <laughs> we play rock band on our Xbox. <laughs> Nice motivational speech from our lead guitarist. Oh, so it's a running joke. Well, if I'd known that, I would have probably taken that into consider. That Charlie Brown is what boredom is all about. Charlie Brown? In what Charlie Brown special does an adult speak like a lesson to Charlie Brown? In what Charlie Brown special are the adults even comprehensible humans who don't speak trombone? But you haven't given me a gift. You've given me an obligation. Unprotected sex. This is not a real atom. The physicists I know are indoorsy and pale. That's physicist just, just, just. I don't know how you live next door to that without doing something about it. <laughs> and I don't know how anybody watched the show even at the time and thought that line was worth laughing at instead of just creepy as hell. Yes? And Sheldon heard Leonard's slight tap on the door. How exactly? Did he have prior knowledge that this rather unfunny bit could unfold right in front of him? Was he reading Edgar Allan Poe's The Raven and thought he was hearing a visitor tapping at his chamber door? Is this show funny? Sheldon asked for a ride to the mall on Wee Bowling Night, but this is at least a day or two later, because Leonard has already hung out with Dave again and had his motorcycle accident and Sheldon was home then. And yes, I guess they could have set up a different day to go to the mall because they couldn't go that evening, but I didn't see it. I hate this show. I'm also a dick, so I'm seeing it I shall. You're kidding. You've got lotions and bath oils and soaps. Uh, that's the estrogen hat trick. I thought the estrogen hat trick was sore breasts, hot flashes, and being at war with your insides every few weeks. I think what you're talking about is the female stereotypes hat trick. Easy mistake. Let's say for a moment that I accept the bath item gift hypothesis. Roll nerd Marshalls. I gave the show a lot of flack because, well, it's horrible. But it does have flashes of genius, including the store, which is called Le Bon Quotidien, which means the daily bath, but is a French play on words for the French saying Le Bon Quotidien, meaning the daily bread. That's a long way to go for a joke that is barely seen and almost no one will get. And if there's one thing I can appreciate, it's stretch for a joke. I don't understand what you're talking about and you're making me a little uncomfortable. A little? After almost 30 episodes, I've created 876 new safe words for every new cringy situation this show has presented me with, and all I have to say to that is Hamster Paisley. Great news, Leonard. I'm no Big Bang Theory historian, but even I know that Leonard's legs and feet are all over Sheldon's special couch seat right now, and he would not be having this. He kicked Kaylee Cuoco out of that seat, so I'm pretty sure he's not putting up with Leonard's taint to toes. <laughs> How did none of the Big Bang gang not know this? They certainly seem to know a lot about the guy when they were gossiping about him over fake colas earlier. By the way, my leg is killing me, thanks for asking. This show attempts to have a running joke about a lame leg, and the irony of that conceptual idea is way funnier than any part of its actual execution. Oh, 
Oh, good, Penny. You're here to exchange gifts. But where is Leonard's original gift? When she first came over with the gift, she had two wrapped presents. Now she has one wrapped present and an envelope. Sorry, the napkin's dirty. He wiped his mouth with it. All I need is a healthy ovum and I can grow my own Leonard Nimoy. Um, actually, you would need a mature somatic cell that includes a nucleus with intact chromosomes and saliva doesn't have that. Who's the nerd now, nerd? 101 totally cool science experiments for kids. You know, because you're so into science. <laughs> See, this is a fun callback to an offhand remark earlier in the episode, and then it comes full circle and creates a pretty funny joke at the end. I'm not removing a sin, but I am acknowledging the potential is there for humor in this show, which makes how unfunny the rest of the episode is all the more irritating. He recycled this gift! He's a re-gifter! Superman says, sure, works up a sweat, comes back to Earth, his uniform now stained with indestructible Kryptonian perspiration. hoo -ah. There are always do-overs when my people play sports. What do you mean, you people? What do you mean, you people? My first Hanukkah with Sheldon, he yelled at me for eight nights. Instead of one day of presents, we have eight crazy nights. So, my question is, what's up with that? 